Uh-oh, sorry, try again. And that's exactly what I did, and I'm so glad that I did. If you guys watched my original video on the amazing CKF Bob Terzuola Eagle Rock production knife, you'll remember that I had two pretty significant issues. The biggest issue being if I went to use the thumb disc to deploy my blade, it would push the blade over so far that it was rubbing on the lock side liner. And I'm happy to report that the good folks over at NC Blade reached out and said, hey, no, we can't have that. We haven't experienced that with our knives. Let me go through, let me, let me put my hands on each individual one that I have left of this variation and exchange for you the one that you're not happy with. I was like, yeah, I really don't, I don't want to be a pain in the ass ever. So I was just going to suck it up and deal with the knife that I had. And I got so many messages from so many people saying, man, if you're not happy, just, you know, send it back, exchange it or get a refund. I'm like, yeah, yeah I mean, we've all gotten knives that we weren't 100% happy with at some point. But the thing was about this one, it only broke my heart because of two things. Number one, I have a strong attachment to the Eagle Rock. I absolutely love the knife. And I love the execution that CKF did. And the other reason is, CKF rarely, if ever, screws anything up. So it was really hard for me to come out here and say, here is... One of my favorite designs of all time, made by one of my favorite brands of all time, and it's not 100% perfect. And I like to consider myself to be uh, friends with Mike over at CKF. So, you know, you always worry about things like that. If, you know, if I come out here and say that their new, you know, $650 knife isn't amazing in every possible respect, you know, if it's going to impact his business, you know, is he going to hate me forever? But here's the thing. When you come out here and you choose to review products on YouTube, you've got to be honest. You have to go out there and say the pros, the cons, even if it's a brand that you really, really, really love and admire like I do with CKF. You can't go out there and say this is the most perfect thing in the world because what happens when people take your word for it, spend their hard-earned money, order one for themselves, and then go, man, this thing's got, this thing is just rife with issues. Why the hell didn't Jim bring any of that up? Then they go into groups where other people have bought the same exact product and they're all complaining about the same things that you're having issues with. And then you realize, hey, this isn't a me problem. This is a widespread issue. So it stands even more to reason that Jim's knife would have had that issue. Why the hell didn't he bring it up? Is he busy kissing somebody's ass? Is it this reason or that reason? No. If I have issues, I'm going to bring them up. I'm not going to be a dick about it. I've done that in the past. But... Yeah, the knife wasn't perfect. And I use the word perfect because that's what I expect from Custom Knife Factory is pretty much perfection. They have set that bar really, really high. Man, I love the grinds on this. I love the finish on this. I don't recall what number my first one was. But if you go back to that video and, and you replay it, you'll see whatever it was before was a different number than this. This is number 269. So this is not a full review. I gave you the full review uh, before in the other video. And at this point, you can just disregard the, the issue that I had mentioned with the, uh, the blade not staying centered because this one is doing just fine. I got to tell you, man, I love putting this thing in the hand. I love how large it is. 
that four and a quarter inch blade looks so domineering. It looks so badass. And it does give you a full sense of, of having a, an actual tactical folder in your collection. There are a lot of knives that follow the tactical theme, but are still EDC knives, or they're dress knives, or they're whatever you want to call them. This, when you put this in your hand, it does feel like a tactical tool. It does feel like a weapon. It is big, it is bold, it's hefty, and it, it plays the part that it looks. It doesn't just have a cool tactical design. It has the feeling like if for some reason every other option at my disposal is no longer a viable option, I feel that by the time I worked my way down to a pocket knife, that this would be the one I would want to have in my pocket at that moment. It just feels like it could get the job done. So I am beside myself completely happy with the replacement. The action is absolutely phenomenal, as you can see. It is glass smooth. It is snot between two panes of glass smooth. The way it feels in the hand, the way the blade glides open and closed on that multi-row bearing system, that incredible CKF wash, as they call it, the vapor blasted finish on, on the blade, the zirconium bolster covers, the carbon fiber scales, the Timascus pivot collars, the whole thing is just pieced together perfectly. Great materials, great finishes, and now perfect fit and finish. I couldn't be happier. I am overjoyed that this knife is back in my collection now. It is fan friggin' tastic. Look how beautiful that is. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew not only is the, the replacement knife perfect, but the, the customer service Mincy Blade was fantastic. Um, they got my knife out super duper fast. And I, I think it only took like two days for the whole thing to be done, three days maybe. And I, I couldn't be happier. They were just, they were a pleasure to deal with. And I've never had any issues in the past ordering from them either. Everything's always been great. But to me, a company really earns its business through its, and I'm not saying this was their mistake, but they really earn their business through their mistakes. How they handle a mistake on an order or a possible defect in the build of a knife or something, the customer service that they give after the sale, after they've gotten your money, is always the most important indicator of the type of business that they run. And NC Blade is solid in my book. I would suggest them to absolutely everybody. And now I am happy as hell. I got my I got my Eagle Rock and I can I can feel free to use it however I want to use it. And I'm not causing any undue wear by scraping up my blade for no reason. I get to just enjoy it for what it is. And I do, I do love this knife. It is just fantastic. So thanks everybody for watching both videos for the previous video, the full review, as well as this one. And, um, Always remember, no matter how perfect a brand may be, shit happens, man. Mistakes happen. And you can't be bitter about it. You can't just... And that's one of the things I can't stand is, you know, you're in a, a, a knife group and somebody jumps in and goes, this brand sucks balls and they're just, they're horribly disparaging about the brand. 
I got my knife and it had this issue with it and they just suck. No, they don't suck. Anything and everything that's manufactured can have a defect or a flaw. Everybody QCs their product differently. Sometimes they just slip through the cracks. You can't just go out and attack that brand for delivering one individual product that doesn't meet your expectations. As long as it is what was advertised, I mean, if it's a completely different thing, you know, that's something different. But, you know, you get a knife and, you know, for some reason the the blade isn't centered or, you know, something trivial is going on. Not like, oh, the heat treat is, is five points off of what the, they claimed or I thought I was buying S90V and what I got was, uh, you know... Hell, I can't even think of a really super cheap steal. But whatever. As long as you got what you paid for, anything else, you know, let's say that the scales were proud of the bolster and if things just didn't fit right or the blade wasn't staying centered and that was because the pivot was stripped out. Small things happen and they can slip through the cracks and that's just part of manufacturing. That's the way it is. What you should do is contact either the brand or the retailer that you bought it from and deal with them and give somebody the chance to make good on on the problem, to make good on their customer service. Even when I had realized I had issues with mine while I was reviewing it, still wasn't bashing the company or anything else because shit happens. And like I said, I was just going to suck it up and keep the knife just the way it was and just be happy that I had it. But it's really good to be able to come out here and say, hey, not only did I have an issue, but they took care of the issue immediately to make sure that I was a satisfied customer. So there you have it. Them's, Them's my thoughts on the redemption have they redeemed themselves? Oh, 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 yeah. I am so friggin' happy to have this. I I almost can't contain my excitement. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. And it's, it's already been a really exciting week. This was just like the cherry on top. So thank you guys for watching. As always, thank you to NC Blade for taking care of, uh, of me as a customer. And thank you to Custom Knife Factory and Bob Terzola for making one of the most badass knives available on the market today in the Eagle Rock.